Greetings, Vinyl Community. Um, so far, 2024 is shaping up to be a fine year for new releases. I recently showed the new Mary Halverson album, which is superb, and the new Surplus 1980, which is technically a 2023 release, but it came out at the, the very end of December, so it might as well be lumped in with the current year. But today I get to show a couple of new ones that have just arrived including the first album in 17 years by Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum. This is a masterpiece or a monster piece. It is truly monstrous. It is titled Of the Last Human Being. And uh, there is a film to go with it, and this cover image is related to that. This actually has its roots in an album that the band began um, at the end of their original uh, existence in 2011. And uh, apparently that was abandoned and the, as the band split apart uh, geographically. But now it's all been revived and put together as a brand new effort, and it's amazing. Very intense, very complex, uh, metal-inflected, prog rock, R.I.O.-inflected. Uh, if you're into King Crimson, if you're into Henry Cow, um, uh, Universero, Thinking Plague, um, Meshuga. This is great stuff. Um, there is a, uh, a cover of a song by This Heat, SPQR. So there's another reference point. If you're into This Heat, um, Sleepy Time Gorilla is for you. This album, it's a double LP, and it's available on various color variations. This one is apparently sold out the splatter. Um, both discs are similar in coloration, uh, but there are a couple of other um, color variants that are still available. And a curiosity about the vinyl release is that all four sides of the album have locked end grooves. So in the track listing, they put an infinity sign at the end of each uh, of the last track on each side because they all go into an infinite loop. And on side two, there's actually a bit of extra music, a coda to that last song on the side, which comes after the locked groove. So if you manipulate your needle uh, to that part of the, the run out, you get to hear a little reprise of that song, which is extra cool. So they've really done themselves proud. I can't recommend this one enough. This is definitely high for the um, uh, great albums of this year list. And um, get a nice little photo of the folks in some interesting attire. Uh, artwork featuring evil bunnies who feature in the lyrics and um, can also be seen. Where's that related CD? The Free Salamander Exhibit was a, uh, a spin off of Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum. You've got those evil bunnies showing up, and the, uh, the new album actually contains a remake of a song from this album. And when I ordered that album, it came along with a little, they threw this in as a bonus. This is a little one-sided 45 by Owls. And forget who we are. It's got some owlish artwork on the other side. This is very punky and cacophonous and not something I would buy myself, but it's a bit of fun. <laughs> Also just arrived, The Earth Has Memory by Mexican composer Concepcion Huerta. And this is very dark ambient electronic music, 
very growly, very minimalist, um, packaged with this nice photo print. So as you can see from the uh, the cover, that uh, the music is very much, and the title, that the music is very much involved with our environment, the earth around us. Um, and this comes on clear vinyl. And I will uh, include a needle drop so you can hear the very stark and minimal sound of Concepcion Huerta's electronic music. Next, three albums from the magical year of 1975. First, Zhao and Shekinah. Uh, both the name of the band Zhao and the title Shekinah are words having to do with the Kabbalah and uh, Jewish mysticism. This is a band that was formed by the pianist Francois Cain and the saxophone player Yoshko Sefer, uh, who were members, early members of Magma, and when they left the band they formed Zhao. Uh, on this album the lineup is completed by Jean-Mi Truong on drums, Pierre Guignon on percussion, and Gerard Provost on fender bass, and they are augmented by a string quartet. This music has roots in the magma sound. I think you hear that. This is not their first album. I think you hear that a bit more on their first. But this is much more jazzy and fusion slash classical uh, related than the sound of magma, that, that intensely rhythmic Zool sound. This is more, more jazz, much more jazz. <laughs> Iconic improvising guitarist, free sounds, and this this tangle of strings on the guitar is just a wonderful evocation of what Derek Bailey's music sounds like. It's tangles of of disconnected notes that somehow he teases into something coherent. It's really hard to understand the miracle of what Derek Bailey does, because his music is so free and so atonal, and yet it has a logic to it. And I, I've probably told this story before, but I once played a Derek Bailey record for a friend, and he protested, but he's just fooling around. And so... I picked up a guitar and without a word I handed it to my friend and he started trying to do what Derek Bailey was doing and fortunately he was intelligent enough to realize that, oh, maybe there's more to it than I thought. Uh, this is on the classic Cramps label from Italy and when, whenever you see this uh, Diverso logo it's a, a sub-series of the Cramps releases. You know you're in for something very rarefied. Nice inner sleeve. Photos of the late Derek. And also from 1975, Family of Percussion by Peter Giger. Peter Giger was the drummer 
for the superb fusion space krautrock band Zion. And this is not at all that kind of space rock. This is, as the cover might imply, strictly percussion. It's all overdubbed multi-percussion works by Giger. And on the back here, he lists the specific instruments used on each track. You see that there are 12 short tracks on here. Um, so it's all, as you might guess, very rhythmic. It's not spacey at all, but it's very cool to sort of get into the flow of the constructions that he uh, has put together. This is on the Oral Explorer label from the U.S. Didn't expect this to even have had a U.S. release, but there we go. The, the Zion albums having come out only in, in Europe. <laughs> And then moving all the way up to the year of 1981 and the residence, Mark of the Mole. This is the beginning of their whole mole concept, uh, and this is the most um, faithful to the idea that there is a concept and a story to the mole show, which uh, they took on, on tour as a, a theatrical presentation. But this is one where you can really follow what's going on in the story. There's some um, dialogue happening that guides you through the tale of the moles and the chubs. And this was kind of the end of an era for the residents, even though it's the beginning of this whole mole concept, which they followed up. It was supposed to be a trilogy, but they kind of never really ended it. They did like a part four of the mole trilogy before they did a, a, a part three. They did a live a uh, mole show record. Uh, this is a promo copy, as evidenced by the fact that there's a cutout hole and that the pipe sticker is directly on the cover. This has the uh, official buy or die inner sleeve. And an insert promoting the Residence Fan Club Weird. And uh, this was apparently uh, the last album by the original lineup of The Residents. They... There's some nice uh, noise for you as I open the next record. Um, they had a, a change of personnel, I think, and it's, it's hard to know exactly what happened because, of course, The Residents were anonymous, and they always put out a lot of intentional misinformation about themselves. So you never really knew who was in and who was out. Um, nowadays, there's stuff you can find on the internet that really tell or appears to tell the straight story of the residents' history and their personnel changes. But after you've been following the residents for a while, you learn to distrust anything you hear about them. So who knows what's real and what's not? And I think that was the whole point all along. Just take the art statement for what it is. Finally, this 1977 recording from Sun Ra, Solo Piano, Volume 1. And this is just what it says on the label. Solo Piano from the Master from Saturn, Sun Ra. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. There's a track on here titled Cosmo Rhythmatic. And I think that's a great definition of this album. Cosmo-rhythmatic music is what we have here. Um, there are six tracks, four of which are originals. Uh, one is a standard, Jerome Kern's Yesterdays, and one, which opens the album, is the old spiritual, Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child. And on the back, 
We have old Sonny himself, photographed by one Rick Laird, who, yes, is the same Rick Laird who was the bassist in Mahavishnu Orchestra. He was also an ace photographer. Sun Ra. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Talk with you again soon. Be well. Space is the place. Bye-bye for now.